Hello and welcome to another video in the How to Make a Chrome Extension video tutorial series. I'm Jerry Hacks and in this video we're going to talk about how to create the interval job that runs in the background even when the pop-up window is hidden. Back in our app we have the communication between the pop-up and background scripts working with our on-message listener. We also have set up functions to handle the different events like stopping and starting the app. Now we need to run a crucial piece of code which is creating the interval job that runs in the background. Let's take a look at the documentation on how to do that. I'm on the Chrome extension documentation website, and I'm specifically looking at chrome.alarms. This is exactly what we're looking for because it allows us to schedule code to run periodically. It also says that we need a permissions of alarms, so we'll have to add that before we start using this. Something that we're interested in, though, is the create alarm. It takes several parameters of name, alarm info, and callback. Name is something that we use to identify this alarm. This will be important for us as we don't want multiple alarms running. Alarm info is a delay or period in minutes. It can also have a when clause, but for us, we're really looking at the period in minutes. And the callback, we don't really care about. One thing I wanted to point out, Chrome specifically says that it limits alarms to at most once every one minute. Now in our case, that's fine because we really just want to run this API call once every minute. But if you're building something else or if you want to tweak this app so it runs more than once a minute, this alarms API doesn't have a built-in mechanism for that. It also says that it may delay them an arbitrary amount, meaning there's no set guarantee that this is going to run every minute or when it's actually going to run. But it's fairly reasonable to assume that it'll run every minute. There is a workaround to the limitation of running the alarm every minute. You could technically have two alarms, for example, if you wanted to run every 30 seconds. So you create the first alarm, wait 30 seconds, and then create another alarm with a different name. In that case, you would have two alarms running, meaning that your scheduled code would run every 30 seconds. But like I said, in our case, we really just wanted to run every minute. Let's copy this piece of code here, jump back to our app. And at the bottom of handle on start, I'm going to create another function here called create alarm and I'm going to paste the piece of code and then remove the arguments. Let's define a name for our alarm. At the top here I'm going to write another const and I'll call it alarm job name and we can call it drop alarm. This can be anything as long as it's unique per alarm you create. I'll set that as the first argument here alarm job name. Then we need to specify the alarm info which is just a JSON object. Let's write period in minutes and we'll set that to 1.0 which is the minimum. I'm going to cut the alarm job name and put it at the top here. We have a way of creating the alarm, but how do we actually run the code that's supposed to be scheduled periodically? If you jump back to the documentation and hit on alarm, it's fired whenever an alarm has elapsed, meaning every minute in our case, this piece of code that we specify in the callback will run. Let's copy this piece of code and in our background file, I'll put it right here at the bottom. I'll remove the callback and let's introduce a fat arrow function with a console log of all on alarm schedule code running. In handle on start underneath where the preps are saved, write create alarm. We can remove that console log. Now we need a way of stopping the alarm. Whenever the user hits the start button, the alarm will be created and running in the background, but we have to give the user a way to stop the alarm whenever they hit the stop button or whenever a life cycle event happens where we want to stop the alarm timer running in the background. Back in the documentation, we can use this piece of code called clear all. We'll use clear all because we want to clear any timer that exists. In our case, there's only one. So we don't really have to specify the specific timer that we want to clear. We can just clear any timer that exists. Let's copy this piece of code, jump back to handle on stop. Underneath create alarm, I will write stop alarm. Paste the piece of code in there, remove the callback. And underneath on stop and background inside of handle on stop function, we will write the stop alarm. So just to recap, when the user hits the start button, we send a message to the background script. The background script will find out that it hits on start event and it will send it to handle on start. Inside of handle on start, we create the alarm. It runs in our specified interval of one minute. If the user decides to hit the stop button, that sends a message to the background script, which is then handed off to handle on stop. And inside of handle on stop, stop alarm is run, which clears all of the alarms. Let's give this a run. Back on the extension page, hit refresh, and we see an error pop up. What is it telling us? Cannot read properties of undefined reading on alarm. So this is happening because we actually never specified the alarm's permission in our manifest file. So if we go back to manifest.json, we actually have to add another permission here of alarms. 
Back in the documentation, at the top it says, permissions of alarms needs to be set if we want to use the Chrome Alarms API. Back in our extensions window, if we hit refresh, no more errors seen here. So let's open up the service worker window, open up the pop-up, let's hit save and start. We see the prefs get recorded here. And now I'm going to speed through the video to where we get our first notification that the scheduled job is running. Okay, and back in our console here, we can see it ran three times. So about once every minute. It's been about four or five minutes. So it's not exactly on time, but it does run about every minute. Let's hit the stop and we should no longer see any on alarm schedule code running console logs. Great, so we have we have the alarm running. We have the alarm being cleared when the user hits the stop button, but we have to add a couple of checks to the create alarm method here because it may happen that we have an alarm running and somehow the user is able to create another alarm. And that would be problematic for our app because we don't want so many alarms running and hogging up the Chrome browser memory. One way of adding check here is by using the get method on the Chrome Alarms API. What we can do is determine if an alarm already exists for the specific name, and if it does, we don't run it again. But if it doesn't, then we can run the alarm. Let's do that. Back in create alarm, I'm going to write chrome.alarms.get, and we want the alarm job name. This will return to us the existing alarm, if one does exist. Let's check if existing alarm does not exist, and if it doesn't, we will move the create into the block. This just means that if an alarm doesn't exist for this specific alarm job name, then we are going to create the alarm. But if it does exist, then we're not going to do anything. We'll let the alarm run as it is. Now that we have our alarms created and stopped, we need to figure out a way to determine if an alarm is running, especially in the pop-up script. As you can see down here, we fetch a bunch of values in here to set the states in our pop-up window. And one thing we need to determine is if we should show the running span here or the stop tag here. And we also have to disable or enable the buttons depending on which running status we're in. We can accomplish this by storing a boolean to our local storage called is running. At the bottom of handle on start, beneath handle on start, I'll write another function called set running status. It'll take a param of is running. And we're going to do something similar to what we do here with Chrome storage local. We're just going to set an additional parameter of is running. In handle on start, we can write set running status of true. And in handle on stop, we can set another running status of false. We can get more technical with this by writing the running status within the Chrome Alarms API here to confirm whether or not it's actually been created. But I think this is a suitable measure for now. Back in our pop-up JavaScript file where we fetch the values from the storage, let's add another parameter here of is running. And I'll write a console log of the running status. And don't forget to destructure is running from the result object. Back in our app, we had the inspect in the pop-up window. You'll see an initial running status of undefined. This makes sense because we reloaded the extension and there is nothing saved for the running status. If we hit save and start, jump out of the window, come back in and inspect, you'll see a running status of true. If we hit stop, jump back out and back in the window, you'll see a running status of false. So it's being set correctly, and this is good. We can now use this is running status to determine our various states of the buttons and the spans up here. In this video, we learned a lot. We learned how to create the alarm and confirm that there's only one alarm being created at a time. We figured out how to save the running status of it, and we also verified that the alarm was running in the background. In the next video, we're gonna talk about how do we change the statuses here dynamically using the is running state that we save locally, and how do we enable and disable the buttons here. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to like and subscribe. And thank you so much for listening. I'm Jerry Hacks.